is voicemail to email, and this is probably one of our top three tickets that we get, uh, you know, on a monthly or quarterly basis. You know, and it's a lot of time it's us or customers asking questions. You know, how do I do voicemail leader, or what's the capabilities of voicemail to email? So we're going to kind of be covering it in two parts today. The first part is, you know, how does a user set up or get set up for voicemail to email? What are the options available to the user? And then part two is probably our biggest thing that we get is is some basic troubleshooting for voicemail to email. Is if you're not getting voicemail, you know, in your email, but you have it set up, what's some basic troubleshooting that you can do in order to alleviate that problem and get it working? So the first thing you'll do is you're going to log into your Shower Director. And we're going to go down to the sites page. You know, the sites page is where each one of your locations is going to be listed. And from there, you'll see in the top left corner, you'll see that we have an Oregon site. I think I actually got rid of my other test sites and stuff in this in this slide. But if you have multiple sites, you'll see Oregon, you'll see Washington, California, whatever sites you have in there. And you'll just want to select the location that we want to verify our email notifications in. If you have multiple sites, you will have to do this same setup on each one of your sites. And so we'll select the Oregon site, and what we're looking to do is set up our SMTP relay. So SMTP is really just a protocol that the short server is going to use to take the voicemail, package it up as an email, and send it out. And since the short system isn't you know, part of your email network, your email domain, or anything like that, what we need to do is we really need a relay. We need another server or IP address that we can send those messages to. So in this case, you'll see the IP address of .16 here. That's our in-house uh, mail server that we can use for you know forwarding mail out to the to the different employees. You could put an IP address in here, or you can even put a DNS name. So if you want to put like exchange.inflowcommunications.com, that would also work. The big thing is when you're saving putting this in here, you want to hit the ping. That ping is just going to test the server to make sure that it can communicate to that. If you hit ping and it, and it says fail to reach it, we know we have a communication issue between the short server and that network. And that might just be a VLAN configuration, a firewall configuration, something like that. But that just gives you basic connectivity testing from the server. So that's the first thing we want to do is we want to set up where we're going to, where we're going to forward our messages out to so when the user gets a voicemail message. So once we have that set up on all of our sites, we need to go pick a user. The users can do this exact same thing from their Shortel communicator. I'm going to show it from an admin you know, level today. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to select users and individual users. And then on the right-hand side of the page, it's going to list all the different users I have. I'm going to go ahead and select my user account. So I'm in my user account, you know, and you've probably most of you've been in the individual user page. So you just, you know, there's a, just a whole bunch of information you can set. The one we really care about is where it says mailbox server, and then there'll be multiple servers that you can select if you have a bigger system. But right next to that is the escalation profiles and other mailbox options. This is where we can set up all of our voicemail rules and everything for this user. So I'm going to go ahead and click there, and then. On the bottom half of the screen, that's what you're going to see on the very top of the escalation profiles and other mailbox. It's your email delivery options. So the first field you'll get is an email address. Great, you put in whatever email address you want. You can even put a comma after the email address and put in a second email address if you want two email addresses. Usually you do hit a character limit after you get two. So if you need more than two email addresses, what I really recommend is creating an email distribution list inside your Office 365, your exchange, whatever you're using for email, create a distribution list with four or five people in it, set that email address in here, and that way we send one, one email out, and it, you know the distribution list then sends it to five or six people. So our three delivery options is disabled, which is the default in the system. So users do need to enable voicemail to email if they want to use that. The second option is email text. Email text isn't used a lot by our customers, because all it does is send you an email saying, hey, Chris, you have a voicemail from Travis Dillard that came in on August the 24th at 10 o'clock at night. You might want to, you know, that's pretty much telling you, hey, you have a voicemail. You should probably log in and check it or go to your phone tomorrow and just listen to that message. The most common option is the attach wave file. So the system will take that voicemail message, convert it 
attach it to an email and send it out. That way when my phone gets it or my Outlook gets it, if I'm sitting at my desk, great, I can play the voicemail on the phone, but if I'm not sitting at my desk, I'm working at a hotel like I am today, I can click on the WAV file in my email, it'll play through my computer speakers, and I can listen to that voicemail, or I can play it on my phone and listen to, the, you know, to that message. The other option you have is the checkbox that says mark messages heard. If you want that blinking light on your phone to stop blinking every time that email is sent out, you check that box. Most people don't like that because they may not actually listen to that voicemail message on their phone or on their email. So they want to get back to their desk. They still want to see the blinking light. Say, oh yeah, I still have that voicemail I need to, you know, I need to listen to. And the other option is to send an email when the mailbox is full. I really recommend this setting. That way, if for some reason you're not in the habit of deleting your voicemails after you listen to them, you can at least get a notification when your mailbox is full and people are going to no longer be able to leave you messages. The system will just send you a message letting you know that your mailbox is full. And then you should go in and do some cleanup. The one caveat on that is when you delete stuff out of your mailbox, it stays in your deleted box until 2 a.m. when the system does database maintenance. So if your mailbox is full and you delete a bunch of stuff, your mailbox is going to be full until 2 a.m. Unless in the communicator client, you empty your deleted items, which you can you know right-click in the under the deleted and say empty them, and that'll, that'll empty it right then and free your mailbox up to take messages before waiting till the overnight um, maintenance window. So we got the email. We got it all set up for voicemail to email. So we get an email on my iPhone. This is a screenshot from my iPhone here. Exactly what you're, you, know, you see on the right-hand side, it tells, you know, it says voicemail message from unavailable. So that would be where you would get caller ID name. Then you're going to get a phone number of the caller. So I know, oh, who it came from, what, what phone number they're calling from. And then for my mailbox. So if I was getting email notifications for three or four different mailbox, maybe a group mailbox or a department, I would at least be able to identify what mailbox it came from. And then you'll see in the body of the message, it tells me how long the message was. And I can simply click on that WAV file on my phone. My phone will download the WAV file and it'll listen, you know, it'll play it back and I can just listen to it on my phone or on my Bluetooth in my car. If, I have, if I'm stopped and I'm playing it in my car, I can just listen to that message. Then I can say, oh, and this was a call I was, you know, I need, I need, uh, you know, one of my other engineers to give this customer a call back or call this vendor back. I can just simply forward this just like I would any other email forward it off, say, hey, you know, can you take, can you take care of this for me? One thing to note is this is a copy of the voicemail. So if I delete this email or I delete it even in my Outlook, it doesn't delete the voicemail from my phone because we're really just sending a copy. So I still have to go in and manage my voicemail box. And this is where that check, you know, that, that notification if your mailbox is full is important. Is if I'm, all I'm doing is listening to the messages on my phone, I need to go into my actual phone and, and delete those messages or I'm going to have a full mailbox you know, in a few months or however, depending on how many voicemails I get. That's the big thing to remember is that these are copies. Currently, Windows phones, Android phones, iPhones, they, you know, they all have the capability to listen to these WAV files. I think that pretty much covers most smartphones. I haven't heard of any anybody having an issue playing. It's a standard WAV file, so you know, the email works on any, any smartphone.